Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. On today's video, it's gonna be a little different. It's not a vlog, it is just let's chat about hormones, specifically weight gain for women in their 40s and above, perimenopause, menopause. Um, I feel that sometimes the word hormones is used way too loosely. And the fact is we have so many different hormones in our body and so many different hormones that regulate whether or not we gain weight. But for the specifics of this video, I want to talk about sex hormones. So estrogen and progesterone and what women tend to experience when they enter into perimenopause and menopause and how that affects their weight. So stay tuned. If you are new here, my name is Janine and I am a weight loss coach. I am just turned 47 years old in the throes, I would say, of perimenopause. Not, it's not officially considered menopause yet, and I'll explain why. And I just entered into a calorie deficit after a period of one year being in maintenance. Um, but this is the first time I've entered into a calorie deficit while being in perimenopause. So I really wanted to pay attention to, is it different? Um, is, is it harder to lose the weight this time around, whereas calorie deficits have always been very effective for me. So I really paid attention to um, some of those things. Now, granted, I've only been in a deficit for four weeks, but I wanted to touch base with you on what has happened in that four weeks. Was I able to, to lose some body fat? So let's go ahead and get okay. it. So first, let's talk about the hormones that fluctuate in perimenopause and remain low in menopause that are the culprits that we often blame for for this weight gain, this weight gain, right, that w women get as we get older, and it is progesterone and estrogen. These are our sex hormones. These are the hormones that, quote unquote, we don't really need anymore once we are not ovulating. They are like our fertility hormones. And so what happens is once we stop ovulating, those hormones remain low. And the problem with that is those hormones are what make us kind of feel youthful, energetic. And in terms of fat loss, specifically progesterone, that is the hormone that determines fat distribution on the body. And this is a big one. This is why menopause and weight gain in the 40s and 50s for women is blamed on. So hormones. what happens when these hormones start to fluctuate in perimenopause and remain low in menopause is we get side effects from that, right? We get hot flashes, mood issues, sleep problems, which also then will cause energy problems. And it's kind of like a domino effect to leading us to behaviors that cause weight gain, right? If you are in a poor mood, not sleeping well, having low energy because of that poor sleep, you're less likely to exercise. You are more likely to have cravings and higher cortisol and eat more, basically. So the combination of the lower energy output from the lower activity from low energy and the higher calorie input results in weight gain. So it's not necessarily, and I really want to be clear here because this is where a lot of confusion comes in. It is not just because your hormones are low that weight you gain weight easier. It is a domino effect. It's due to the side effects. Now, that being said, progesterone specifically is responsible for where we distribute fat on our body. So when we are in our child bearing years. We are fertile myrtles, what they say, right? Um, when we gain weight, it is predominantly focused in our thighs and hips m for most people um, and not so much the abdomen. It gives us those girly figures and it is what, you know, contributes to uh, the differences between a male and a woman body. Um, whereas women have a, a smaller waist, tend to have more fat in the lower, you know, in, below the waistline. Um, and so when our progesterone is low and we gain weight, rather than that fat distribution kind of being all over and then predominantly focused in the hip and thigh and buttocks area, it now concentrates to the abdomen. So the lower progesterone doesn't cause you to store more fat per se, 
but it does cause you to store fat in the abdomen. What does this do? Think about this. If you gain 10 pounds in your mid 20s and 30s, that 10 pounds of fat is more likely to be distributed all over the place, right? Your arms, your face, your legs. If you gain 10 pounds in menopause with the low progesterone, that fat is much more likely to be concentrated into one area. That also gives the perception that 10 pounds really feels like 30 pounds. Suddenly it feels a lot more significant and it feels like it came out of nowhere because when it's concentrated, it's much more noticeable. Now let's enter in me as an example. So the reason I characterize myself in perimenopause is because I have not had a period now. Last year it was very irregular. Um, I'd have one every like three months. Now it has been nine. So I won't actually be officially considered in menopause until I have had no period for one year. So technically it's still considered perimenopause, but I definitely feel some of the symptoms in terms of maybe it's a little harder for me to stay into like that deep solid sleep sometimes. I have the periods of heat intensity, those hot flashes, maybe some mood stuff. Um, but not a whole lot. It's very regulated. It's very minimal. And I do attribute that to my healthy lifestyle because the key to minimizing weight gain when you are, especially when you are entering into these years of perimenopause and menopause is to be living a healthy lifestyle is to be having those lifestyle modifications that are preemptive and they will prevent a lot of that, you know, weight that comes out of nowhere because you're already focused on working out, you're already monitoring your calorie intake. So even if you might have less energy or you might want to eat more because you're monitoring them, you won't do that. And so that will minimize the side effects of weight gain. Um, but that being said, I was in maintenance for a period of a year as I usually am. You know, I, I don't spend the majority of my life in a calorie deficit. I spend it in maintenance. Um, but this year, towards the end of the year, I felt like I started to accumulate a little fat in the midsection. And I know that um, I hadn't fluctuated a lot in weight. So maybe this was about two pounds of fat. In the past, a two pound weight gain, sorry, my dog is kind of growling. A two pound weight gain would not result in my jeans not fitting because that two pounds of weight gain, maybe from ho the holidays, would be distributed. Maybe, you know, my face, my butt, my legs, a little more evenly, a little less noticeable. This time, after the holidays, I kind of felt like it was, it felt like 10 pounds. And I know it wasn't 10 pounds, but it felt like 10 pounds. And that's because I experienced hormonal weight gain. I experienced that because my weight, even though it was a small amount gained, was concentrated into the abdomen, it felt like much more than it was. So I'm gonna pop up a picture. This is me trying to try on my favorite jeans that have absolutely no stretch from Zara exactly four weeks ago. I could button them barely with a struggle, with a squatting action and a struggle, but I could not zip them without potentially breaking that zipper. This is what I use as my measurement of, okay, I want to see if I enter into a modest calorie deficit and after a period of a month lose approximately two pounds of body fat, will I be able to lose this body fat or will it be more difficult now that I am in perimenopause and I have low estrogen, low progesterone, Will it be more difficult? As many people claim, they claim that calorie deficits don't work when you're, for women in their late 40s, 47 here, um, it's different, hormones, and I think they give people, they plant this in, they, you know, perpetuate this message, and then people feel deflated, like, oh my gosh, well, I'm already in menopause, there's no way I'm going to be able to lose it, because I don't have, it's too hard. And so then they don't even try. And I'm here trying to give you messages of hope, not discouragement. I don't want to make you feel like because you gained the weight during the change um, to feel less than. I'm doing this to tell you that it's, you can still do it. Don't believe the hype. Don't let people 
trick you into thinking it will be so, so, so much more difficult. It doesn't have to be. And so here is a picture I took yesterday and I'll actually put up a video as well. There is no editing here um, of the same jeans. Exactly four weeks later, they fit, they zip, they look fine. I lost that weight gain. I was able to lose the body fat in the tummy area, even though I am still not had a period, still in the throes of perimenopause in my late forties. So this is what I sought out to prove. You know, to be honest, I didn't know for sure. Um, I have to say this was the first time I experienced a small amount of weight gain that went concentrated to my abdomen. Um, I'm okay with it though, because I love being able to test out my theories on myself. Besides the fact that I've helped thousands of clients and thousands of women change their lives by telling them it's never too late. You can lose weight at any age. Doesn't matter if you're in menopause, you can still put on muscle. You can still begin your, your, your healthy lifestyle in the gym just because you never worked out before. doesn't mean it's too late for you. Um, a calorie deficit still works. And I don't like when people make blanket statements about how difficult it is for women in their 40s and 50s. Listen, weight loss is difficult. Um, everybody has different challenges and I just don't like the blanket statements. Yes, somebody might have a more difficult time finding where that calorie deficit should be because they have maybe a condition that's not being treated like hypothyroidism that does affect hormones, a different hormone, thyroid hormones that cause um, changes in your metabolism that would impact what your your calorie deficit should be. Um, if you're not on medication, it could, could drastically change things by like 20 to 25%. So yes, there are challenges that different women may have, but the key is to work with someone to help you figure out what those challenges are and don't get discouraged thinking that just because your age, just because you're in menopause, just because you have a ton of weight to lose or you already put on the menopause weight gain because you weren't already doing lifestyle modi modifications and the 10, 20 pounds crept up on you because the estrogen dropped, the progesterone dropped, you got cranky, you started um, sleeping poorly, you started moving less, you stopped working out because you didn't have energy, you lost muscle mass. Now your metabolism has shifted downward because of the muscle mass loss. These are all the things that contribute to where you may find yourself. And I just want to give you hope. Doesn't have to be that way. Um, you can still lose weight in a calorie deficit. You can still lose weight when you are in menopause, in the throes of menopause, perimenopause. Um, if you are not yet in perimenopause, then I strongly encourage you to immediately implement um, healthy lifestyle modifications. It will, you preemptively will, you know, circumvent a lot of the things that us women experience if we're not already living a healthy lifestyle. Now, I can imagine that weight, if I had not, you know, I consistently work out, I monitor macros, I was in monitored maintenance and still managed to have a couple of pounds creep up around my midsection, causing several pairs of my jeans not to fit. I can imagine had I not had that strong foundation, yeah, 10, 15, 20 pounds will creep up real fast and it'll feel like 30, 40, 50 pounds when it's all concentrated in this area. So I feel for you, but I still want to give you hope because it doesn't matter. Even if that's happened, it's not too late. It's never too late. Um, if you're interested in working with me, would love to work with you. My, all my information will be down in the description. Hopefully these results of mine were encouraging. I'm here to try to encourage you, not discourage you. If you're not already following me on social media, I'm on Instagram. Um, my weight loss channel is at Jay's Body Bootcamp. I'm also on um, Instagram as Mrs. CO underscore J. You can also find me on TikTok. Thank you so much for tuning into this video and we'll see you guys on the next one.